is Tech It Out! And this week on Tech It Out, Jeff will show you a really cool literacy support tool. Mike will follow that up with a way to control your notifications in macOS. Greg will show you a handy shortcut for creating new Google Docs, slides, forms, and sheets. And Simon's going to show you how to message your class in management. Tech it out! Alright everybody, can you get out to your computers, open up a new Google Doc. Then I want you to search for these words in the dictionary. Um, once you find their definitions, can you type them into your Google Doc? And then in the encyclopedia, you should find some pictures to match those words. If you take a photo of those pictures, and then transfer it to your computer, and then add it to your Google Doc, then we'll have our very own visual dictionary created by you. Hey, Mr. Gary! What are you doing? Get with the times and use some AI! But, but, Mr. May, I am with the times. I'm, the students are using their computers. Oh my goodness, Mr. Derry. You should be using Read Write. <laughs> Read Write? What's that? Read and Write is a Google Chrome extension that ASW has purchased and it's available for every student and teacher. It's a literacy support tool that offers help with everyday tasks. The first thing you're going to want to do is to install Read and Write. To do this, you go to the web store for Google Chrome. I like to do this by clicking on the top left, then select web store. I do a quick search for Read and Write and click add to Chrome. Then I allow all the permissions. Once it's added, you then might like to pin it to your toolbar so it always stays there. Now that you've pinned Read and Write, once you click on the purple jigsaw puzzle icon, the Read and Write toolbar will appear and you can start using Read and Write on any G Suite product and on most websites. One of my favourite features and a really useful tool for teachers and students takes the monotony out of word lists and visual dictionaries. It allows students to highlight words either on a website or a Google Doc, then collect the highlights and create a brand new Google Doc with all the highlighted words, a dictionary definition, an image and a place for their own notes. This is an easy way for students to create their own visual dictionaries. And I love the fact that students can then use this doc as a basis for their own thinking. They can remove definitions, add their own images, and add or take their own notes. Read and Write can also be really useful for teachers. It's got a feature where you can record a voice comment directly onto a Google Doc, so you can give students personalised feedback without having to type. Read and Write has so many features, including Check It, Prediction, Dictionary, Picture Dictionary, Read To Me, Screenshot Reader, Audio Maker, Internet Search, Screen Mask, Talk and Type, Translate, Highlights, Collect Highlights, Vocab, Voice Note, Practice Reading, and Simplification. With the click of a button, students can take away all the ads and extra details that you don't want them to see on a website, and even make the articles and reading shorter. Read and Write really is an incredible tool, and I recommend that you and your class start downloading it and using it now. Has this happened to you? You're presenting something to your class, or you're sharing your screen on Zoom, and you're just about to drive home that important point, when you get messages and pop-ups that steal your thunder on the right side of your screen, distracting your audience. Well, I'm here today to show you what you can do to prevent that from happening. Go to System Preferences. I like to go up to the Spotlight and type in System Preferences. And then to the Notifications icon. It's the one with the bell. Here, you can set your Do Not Disturb settings to not allow notifications when you're mirrored to TVs and projectors. 
Or, better yet, you can go through your apps and turn off any pesky programs that keep disturbing you with notifications you don't care about at the worst times. Just click on the app and turn off the notifications. You can now rest easy. Keep focused, my friends. Do you create a lot of Google Docs, Forms, Sheets, or Slides? Does it take you four tedious clicks and countless wasted seconds to create a new document? Do you ever lie awake at night thinking there must be a better way? Well, now there is, and it's called Dot new. But what's dot new, and how does it work? Well, dot new is as easy as one, two. Just press command T and type dot new. For example, in Google Chrome, press command T to open a new tab. Then type docs.new, and in no time at all, you'll have a fresh, clean Google Doc to work on. You won't believe just how easy it is. Now .new works with all your favorite file types, so there's even more ways to use .new to be a better, faster, more productive .u. This video is looking at using ManageBack to message your class. I'm in a class, I click on Messages. I'm going to just ignore this right hand side at the moment. But as you can see, you've got a little pencil here to change uh, filter categories if you want to change them. But I'm not going to do any settings there at the moment. I'm just going to come up to post message or I could add message from down here. I'm going to click on post message. This screen appears. Notice that we have a legend of some of the keywords here in the case of notifying members by email, the parents, and also what happens if you make it a private message. I'm going to just simply uh, write my message. This is going to be a reminder. I'm going to give it a category as an announcement. And I'm going to remind them to bring their laptop to class tomorrow. I have some options before I send it. One is I can get a notification via email to the members of the class. I can also notify the parents that I've posted this message. Parents, if they log in, will see this message. If I make the message private, it goes only to the teachers of the class. Students can also post messages, and if they make it private, it goes to themselves and to the teachers of the class. They can't send in between class members. So then I simply add, add the message, and the message is posted. So a few things about the message. The members can reply to a message, people can make a comment, and also there is the ability to do likes etc to the message. The only people who can respond to a message are your students, parents cannot. And the last feature up here is that you can edit the message again or you can delete it. So this is a quick way of sending out announcements, messages to your class and just remember that parents will be seeing these messages as well. And I'd just like to leave you with a clip of our national rugby team getting ready for the next match. Thank you.